So the Clinical Guidelines for Stroke Management are a set of statements that help to guide clinicians in what they should be doing for people who've had a stroke. They cover the whole spectrum of stroke recovery from what we should be doing to recognise stroke early and what we should be doing to get people to hospital quickly through to rehabilitation and through to things about how to prevent people having another stroke and help them live long and healthy lives. The clinical guidelines are important because they link the evidence base, so the evidence that we have from research into clinical practice and they help to make sure that we're translating our best research ev evidence to our patients so that people after stroke are getting the best possible clinical care. So the guidelines recommend that when people have a stroke and they come to hospital that their needs for rehabilitation are, are assessed as soon as possible and within 24 to 48 hours after stroke ideally. It's important to note that we put that recommendation in the acute medical chapter of the guidelines because we want people to remember that rehabilitation should start straight away. Based on the results of the very large AVERT trial, we now know that patients should start their out of bed activities after 24 hours, but definitely before 48 hours. So the very early mobilisation, the getting people out of bed as soon as they get to hospital is, is not recommended. The 2017 guidelines have changed in terms of the amount of, of therapy time that, that we recommend. Based on our current evidence base, we recommend that, re that patients receive up to three hours of scheduled therapy per day, that's physiotherapy and occupational therapy in particular. But really importantly, the recommendation is that people receive at least two hours of active task practice because we all know that scheduled therapy time doesn't necessarily equate to people doing meaningful practice of the tasks they need to to improve. For rehabilitation, the new 2017 stroke guidelines don't really see a shift in care greatly from the 2010 guidelines, but they perhaps provide more detail around what is expected for clinicians to be providing to stroke survivors. More than 10 years ago, Julie Bernhardt famously completed the, the inactive and alone study that really shocked everyone at the time because we, we were all surprised that the majority of time spent in Australia in re rehab is in fact sitting in your bed or sitting by your bed by yourself. We have seen numerous repetitions of that study and the consistent message is that actually very little time that is spent in an inpatient rehab unit is spent doing active therapy. So what that means is that in order to change that we have to really do something different to what we've always been doing. Here at Alfred Health, the 2017 guidelines have really refocused our team on thinking about how we provide rehabilitation across the whole day for stroke survivors who are in rehab. So we've really focused in on all time in rehab should be rehabilitation. We've really focused in on how we can increase the amount of therapy that is provided, but also looked at alternate ways of working with families as well as with nursing staff and asking for a continuation of the amount of rehab we provide. So upper limb rehab and the intensity of upper limb rehab provision on the wards here at Colford Hospital has been a priority for us certainly for the last two years and we work really hard um, to facilitate um, patients to receive high amounts of upper limb rehab. We encourage attendance at group programs as well as involvement um, of family members as well as completing an independent practice um, package outside of their scheduled therapy sessions. It's not just one discipline or another, we really try and make it interdisciplinary in our approach um, and use every opportunity of, of time in rehab to be doing rehab practices or working towards rehab practices. When guidelines are released, one of the things we acknowledge is that release of a guideline is not enough to change clinician practice. And so we do know as clinicians that we have to invest time in not just understanding the guideline, but also unpacking how we're going to change our practice afterwards. We also know that if they are audited internally by the team who actually are delivering the care, then there is something that changes in the amount of empathy and drive towards changing practice. That seems to be part of the intervention, that's part of the magic of audit and feedback. So the audit and feedback project that we completed here at um, Caulfield Hospital was um, I think a very exciting program, program of, of research that we were able to do. We were able to get significant clinician behaviour change over the time um, and now I have been able to use uh, the audit feedback intervention as a really good um, way to help clinicians add in a behaviour monitoring system um, to monitor their practice. So one of the things we heard about in focus groups that we ran is that often occupational therapists and physiotherapists would say, 
I, you know, I, I go about my daily business and sometimes no one's really, I mean, no one's really watching the ins and outs of everything that I'm doing. But with the audit and feedback on a regular basis, it was able to provide that feedback to clinicians to say how much of their therapy that they are providing is consistent with the guidelines, that, um, with the guideline recommendations of what we should be providing. The 2017 guidelines are published on the Stroke Foundation website known as Inform Me. So you can find them quickly by just Googling the Stroke Foundation, navigating to their Inform Me website, and then there's links there through to the clinical guidelines for stroke management. Once you click on those, it directs you to another website called Magic App, um, and that's where you can navigate to the sections of the guidelines that you need to see. The guidelines are published in eight separate chapters, so you do need to go to the chapter that, that interests you. But it's important to know that the background information is the same in all of the chapters and that we've tried to hyperlink between chapters where that's relevant.